Many nonprofits come to me and they say, Rebecca, can you make us an impact report or can you at least help us demonstrate our impact? And I often find that they have never uh, defined what impact looks like for them. Like they have never defined what their programs are supposed to be doing. Like what was the end result? And being impactful doesn't happen on accident, folks. You don't just start a program and hope that it's impactful. Well, actually... A lot of us do, right? We're like, we have this great idea. Of course, we're just going to get down to let's start it and let's see what happens. But the thing is, is magic happens, right? We have these beautiful programs where magic is happening. We get to see these moments. We get to see people who have transformations. We get to see what our offerings deliver for people. But that's all like woo woo magic that's in here. And it's really hard to articulate that to stakeholders and donors. Okay. And we need to be able to bring those moments alive and articulate it really good. And I get that it's difficult. So I want to walk you through today exactly how you can set up your programs in a way that you can easily demonstrate the impact of them and you can do it at any given moment. So let's talk about it. Welcome to episode 55 of Four Purpose Live, where I help you get clear, get focused, and be impactful by showing you how to step fully into that calling that you've been given without taking on that common narrative that nonprofits need to struggle. That's right, together we can get you in your sweet spot using your strengths and your talents to serve this world and build a movement for your mission simply by living for purpose on purpose. I am your host, Rebecca Britt, and today we are talking about demonstrating impact of your programs. Now, I have helped hundreds of nonprofits using my four purpose method, and you can get immediate access to that. It's a five step method with specific checklist action items so that you can better understand what you're trying to do for who, how to measure it, how to communicate it so that you can build a movement and you can essentially be, have the impact that you want to make. All right. So go grab that four purpose method checklist. It is at fourpurposelive.com slash method. Okay. So you want to demonstrate impact of your programs. Here's the deal. This is going to sound really obvious, but you need to start with your purpose. And I'm talking about for everything you do, not just, you know, programs like, yes, yeah, start with your whole organization. Like what's your mission? What's your purpose? And then if you have different, like in our impact roadmap model, we show people how to do different vehicles for change. Like how, what vehicles are going to get you to your mission and each vehicle needs its own purpose statement. But each program under that vehicle needs its own purpose statement. So typically, like somebody decides, okay, we need to start a support group for the parents that are in our nonprofit. So maybe you serve the kids and the parents need a support group. And what do we typically do? We're like, certainly that's an amazing idea. Obviously, people will get that parents need support. That's a good thing we should do. So we start planning it. We just get right into... What are we going to do week one? Is it going to be a 12 week program? Is it going to be a six week program? And the problem is, is you've skipped the purpose. Why? Why are you doing a support group and what do you expect it to deliver? Okay. And like who? So like who's invited to this support group? Get really specific. Is it all of the parents that come? You know, can parents bring uh, friends that are like their kids don't go to your organization, like these things will come up. So thinking them through is really important, but to demonstrate impact, you need to get that purpose down. So what are you offering with this support group? And trust me, it will help you when you're starting to market the support group as well. When we don't come up with a purpose and not everybody knows exactly why we are here, then things get willy nilly and hairy. And a lot of times they're not as impactful because guess what? Nobody knows why we're here. A support group could be so many things. You could do it like you're going to teach people about specific parenting things. You could have a uh, guest like experts come and teach. It could just be a conversation group. They could just get together and you could have one focus topic and they all just communicate about it. Like there's so many ways to structure it and how you structure it is determined by the purpose. Okay. So if the purpose of the support group is to give parents tangible parenting techniques while providing a supportive community, cool. Then we know 
not only how we should structure the group, but now we need to come up with curriculum of like, what are these tangible parenting techniques? And we need to assess whether or not we, the parents feel like we gave them tangible parenting techniques. And did they feel a sense of belonging within the group if we wanted to provide them with a sense of community or, or, or other people? So we have to start with the purpose. The purpose might be just a group to reduce isolation for parents that are have kids in your program. Okay, so if it's just to reduce isolation, then you wanna focus way more on the belonging piece. You wanna focus way more on making sure enough people get there, um, way more on making sure people feel seen and heard and that they have a floor to speak and that we give them good opportunity to speak, okay? Because that's how we're going to make people feel less isolated and like they have a group of people around them, okay? So the first thing is, is what is your purpose? What are you trying to give them? What do they get out of joining this program? And I'm going to caution you from being like, yeah, you know, it's like a support program. Like we'll do education sometimes. Like we'll let it just be free form and they'll talk sometimes. Like well, the more willy nilly you are, the more willy nilly your group will be, people will be less bought in and people won't show up. Like you'll feel like, oh, it's really hard to like get people to speak sometimes. And when we don't get a speaker, it's, and it's because they're like confused to what we're doing. Like, no, but if you set up, okay, this is specifically to teach you parenting techniques and build a sense of community within uh, other parents going through this, then you set it up and maybe you do some like market research to figure out, you know, what time of day, how many weeks do parents want to do this? Is it open enrollment? Is it closed enrollment? You know, there's a whole bunch of things to think about when it comes to support groups. But you do some market research, then you set your time, you set your curriculum, and you make sure that every time you're going to do Everybody loves consistency, okay? So every time you're gonna do a half hour of uh, education with a guest speaker, or if you can't get one, then at least you're gonna do a half hour of an education from you um, or your organization, and then a half hour of connection time. And even the connection time can be really structured. We go around and we ask this question, then we do open dialogue, we have a set topic every time so that it's not just, hey, what are you guys going through today? But hey, have you guys dealt with this specific thing how did you deal with it? What has been a pain point and what has been successful? So people know exactly what they're supposed to say. Okay, this was not supposed to be a video on how to start a support group, but it is that process. Like you have to go back and plan that much before you launch something. I feel like I need to say it because every nonprofit I've been a part of tends to launch before they figure out what the heck they're trying to do and it's not intuitive, and there's so many ways, even just the example of a support group can go down. So you wanna just be really clear. Because the thing is, at the end of the day, your programs are supposed to achieve your mission. So if your mission is more tied to educating, giving psychoeducation to parents, or making sure that the kids have a good home life, and one way you get there is through education, then your support group should have an education component. If your mission has to do with reducing isolation and bringing together the foster parent community, then you might just have a more of a support um, focus in your support group and not an education. But you have to think through it. The whole point of any of your programs is to help effectuate your mission. So stop and think about, okay, how does this program help the mission? And then what's the very specific purpose of this program, okay? Next, you're going to define metrics, okay? So now you have your purpose statement and you need to define metrics. So let's take the support group thing again. Let's say that the purpose of that is to provide practical parenting techniques and reduce isolation. Like, let's say it's both. We want them to have a meaningful community and we want them to get educated. Okay, cool. So what are our metrics around that? Our metrics might be retention rate. Okay, so if parents come back, then that's a pretty good gauge that they felt a meaningful sense of community and that it was a good program for them. Let's say at the end of a survey, 
uh, like at the end of the six weeks or the 12 weeks or whenever the group is, maybe at the end of a year if it's open enrollment or um, at the end of any specific term, you can ask with a survey, um, would you refer somebody else like you to this group? That's always a really good one. Like, would you recommend this to others? That's always a really good satisfaction score. But make sure that you have metrics that are very specific to the purpose. So the purpose was to give them tangible education uh, that they can use in their parenting and to reduce isolation. So ask them a question. Were you able to implement any of the parenting techniques? Yes or no? So you can say 75% of attendees said that we offered them practical advice that they were able to implement. Okay, then you can ask them a question. Did we offer, did this uh, support group offer a meaningful sense of community? You can also ask them, did they feel a sense of belonging? You can also ask them, do they feel less alone? That's how you can evaluate it, but you can have, um, you can have the metrics be that your target's going to be 70% of people feel less alone, 70% of people say that they were able to implement some of the education that we gave them, which is really important because we don't care. We don't want to ask them, did we offer you education? Like, yeah, you did. We want to know, did it work? Was it helpful? So you can say, was the education provided helpful? And you can have another question that says, did you actually implement any of the education? And then I would also like ask in that survey, like some qualitative, like tell us more, what could we do better? Um, tell us about a moment where you were able to implement it and how that worked for you. What was one key learning that you got from the support group? What were some key relationships you made? Give us one uh, day that you remember that was more meaningful, you know, so that you're getting some real qualitative data of what's important to people. And then you just use that as a learning in your next cohort, okay? So you're gonna define metrics. Again, that's gonna look like, number of people enrolled, so that's a how much metric. Then you're going to retention rate, so how many people keep coming back. Maybe um, percentage of sessions people attended, so maybe you have 20 people in your support group, uh, but on average about 15 actually show up, so that could be a good um, indicator of whether or not this is valuable to people. Then another metric could be percentage of people, 70% say that you did give them good education, 60% said they were actually able to implement it, 70% said that they felt a meaningful sense of community or that they made lasting relationships in, in this group, okay? So, you've got your purpose, you've got a list of some juicy metrics of how you're going to impact people's lives. You are going to give them actual tangible education and you are going to give them a meaningful sense of community, okay? Now you have to set up systems and workflows to track those metrics. This isn't that difficult, but you, you don't wanna to get to the end of it and go, we had these metrics, now let's go back and try to figure out how many people came and shoot. I know it's been a while, but let's shoot out a survey. No, you wanna set up your systems and processes so from the beginning, you are collecting data. So that might just be that there's an application form because forms are really good at tracking things for you automatically. So if there's an application form, then you have their information, you have how many people are enrolled. So let's say you just open a Google sheet and you take the form. Actually, if it's a Google form, it'll go directly to a Google sheet. So it'll add a line each time somebody fills out that form. So of the people that applied, you can create another tab on that sheet and say how many people actually enrolled. Then you can say, uh, you know, you could have a process where you mark off um, all the different sessions. So maybe there's six weeks in each column, there's a week and next to the person's name, you mark attendance. But you need to have that system and process set up before your first support group. Okay, so marking attendance somehow, however you want to do it, but you need to be able to mark attendance. If you're trying to see of the people that come, how many people continue to come, what's your average show up rate? It's good data to have, okay? Then 
you want to have the survey at the end, okay? So you say, hey guys, we are here to offer you these very specific things, education and community support. There's a survey, we wanna know how we did that. Please let us know how we could do better. Make them fill out the survey while they're there, right? Don't send them the Google form and hope that they do it. Just do it, you know, anytime you have a captive audience, collecting data in real time is awesome, okay? So that's really all you need to do is start with a purpose, Get some metrics, so here's your purpose. If you are, what metrics, what are indicators for success that you did your purpose well? If you hit these metrics, you feel like you actually accomplished your purpose, okay? Then set up the systems and workflow to track the metrics. Now you don't need to call somebody like me and say, hey, can you help us demonstrate our impact? You have your juicy numbers. 85% of families that come to our support group come again we retain that many people. 95% of support group members say that they had a meaningful sense of community and that we reduced isolation for them. 90% said they actually got education, parenting education that they were able to implement. Boom, I will fund that. I'm happy to go like, oh, let's get more parents in that. If you're saying isolation and education is a really tough thing and your support group has that good of success metrics, there, you've demonstrated your impact, done. You've got it, send that out. Now here's a big deal. I, I just wanna mention this. If you are collecting data from a group of people, a cohort, your participants, whoever, do not just collect that data and go, cool, sweet, we've got what we need and go off and give that to funders or donors. Respond back, say, hey, participants, these were our results. We noticed that 65% of people said that it was a meaningful community, but we would love it to be closer to 100%. Could you give us some tangible action items or what we could do better to facilitate this sense of community with you? Hey, 95% of you said that this really helped you implement new parenting techniques. We couldn't be more thrilled, we're so happy. Is there anything during next cohort you think would be helpful? Did we leave anything out? That way they feel like you have taken what they've said to heart and if they've given you critical feedback or you know they just rated that it wasn't as high um, for them, then you're saying we heard you, okay? And if they said that it was amazing, say like thank you, thank you for that, like that's what we meant to do. So always report survey results back to the people that gave the survey. Surveys are not the only way to collect data but it's a great way. You can also do a pre and post test. So you could literally have everybody entering your support group, answer a set of questions. How isolated do you feel? Do you feel uh, connected to a community? Do you feel like you have tools to deal with your kid's behavior? Da, 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 da. At the end, exact same test. How do, do you feel isolated? Do you feel alone in your journey? Do you have tools? And if they score higher, then you can just say 90% of people said saw a um, reduction in their feelings of isolation. 90% of people said they felt like they had more tools after the program. Okay, so I love pre-post test too. Uh, really easy and that's like our super objective way to see if the program helped because they're literally saying exactly how they are when they enter and how they are when they left and you can surmise that it was because of your program um, that it was helpful. Okay, I hope that that helps, it's pretty easy, but every single one of your programs, if you stop right now and you're wondering, how do I demonstrate impact? Let me know. Do you have a purpose statement that's very clear about what you're trying to achieve? What's your desired result? What are you trying to do for people? Then your metrics are, if you hit these metrics, you are successfully achieving that purpose and you've got your systems and processes to collect the data, then you never need me. Because at any given time, somebody could say, how's your support group going? You pull open your Google sheet and you say, actually, it looks like we're doing pretty good. Or after the you know first time, you know what? A lot of people aren't showing up and it's only week two. Let's, let's reach out, let's see what's happening, okay? But if you're not collecting that data, then maybe the staff that you have running that support group feels like nobody's showing up, but nobody cares. We're not talking about it. We're not shifting gears, okay? So we use data to learn and to shift. Tell that story to stakeholders and donors. When we first started this, we were getting like 50% retention rate. We didn't really know why. Then we asked our community what would be helpful. We implemented the changes and this year we're getting 80% ret retention rate. 
Tell the story of how you're dedicated to learning. You don't need to tell the story that you're perfect and you get it right every time. No, you understand that there's complexities with your population and that it's not, change is not easy. But you are dedicated and willing to show up over and over and over again and learn and apply new methods until something works. And that's why somebody should fund you, okay? A donor wants to hear that way more than we have 99%. We have 99%. And then forever you just have 99%. No, like, hey, people like vulnerability. They like authenticity. Be that and do that with data. Okay, have data, back it up. It's, it isn't that difficult. I know it seems overwhelming, but you will, be, you will feel so much better if every one of your programs has purpose and metrics and you have systems and processes to collect that data. All right, I would love for you to comment below. Let me know one metric you have for one of your programs or your purpose statement for one of those programs. I would love to see purpose. We are all about for purpose, on purpose. That's what my shirt says. So I would love to see your purpose statement. Like, share, subscribe, do all the things. It really helps me in the algorithm and gets people's nonprofits this critical information so that they can do this easier, quicker, and be more impactful, okay? Don't forget to go download the four purpose method and the checklist that I have for you. It's at fourpurposelive.com slash method. Until next time, thank you so much for your service to this world. Thank <laughs> you.